Is China seeking to build an alternative world order by collaborating ever more closely with its Global South colleagues? Recently, China elevated its relations with all African countries that have diplomatic relations with the country to a strategic partnership level after welcoming over 50 African leaders to Beijing for the Forum on China-Africa cooperation. A few days later, China, Latin American and Caribbean countries held the first ever joint roundtable on human rights cooperation. And right now in the capital, China is currently hosting the 11th Shangshan Forum with a dedicated plenary session focused on multipolarity and the evolving international order. How are such engagements among the global south impacting or altering the international order? What are the results of China's increasing trade, investment and cultural exchanges with the Global South? And how do these efforts compare to Western strategies? To shed light on these issues, I was pleased to be joined by Peter Chan, Deputy Director of the Institute of China Studies at the University of Malaya. When you look at the optics coming out of Beijing, you feel that there is a real, almost uh, like-minded group of people who believe in economic partnerships but not military alliance. Is that what, uh, what is really happening in your eyes? And without the military alliance, without, the, the, without discussing forging military ties, how does the Global South approach achieve security and peace in the world? The GDI is the centerpiece of the Committee of Shared Future for Humankind. But we need a stable, peaceful environment, global environment, in which to bring about social, economic well-being and prosperity. Of course. So the Global Security Initiative is critical. It's an important part of the Committee of Shared Future for Humankind. But the GSI, the Global Security Initiative, is mainly a defensive mechanism it is used to stabilize an environment. It is not used to project power or domination or, or colonization. It is mainly to stabilize, to, to, to secure an environment in which we can grow and economically uh, prosperous. So I think uh, GSI, it will have to be there. But I think our, the Chinese understanding of the GSI is extend beyond the military. From what I read, the security component here includes environmental security, uh, pandemic security, you know, so digital security, food AI security. security. It, yes, it's very comprehensive. It is not just a military. We need to have a safe, secure environment to coexist. And the Chinese version of the global security initiative is absolutely comprehensive. It doesn't just cover the military dimension. Mm. So we need to work together, everyone, and in all the dimensions in which to, to bring about a truly peaceful and stable community with a shared future for humankind. Well, some people would say, uh, as a devil's advocate, people would say China is also developing a modern military force. You know, uh, China aims to uh, have a modernized uh, um, national defense force by uh, 2049 and uh, China is also building up its uh, capabilities in terms of Navy in terms of even going to deep blue uh, blue Navy areas um, some would say that is contradictory to China's call for global peace and security or its claim that its uh, military buildup is uh, um, defensive in nature what would your response be it's absolutely defensive. I mean, you need uh, any strong power needs to have a defense industry, a defense power to to protect its own own uh, objectives and strategies. To the extent that China is modernizing its military, it is mainly as an act of a reaction to what it perceives as threat from abroad. It is mainly a modernization to act as a deterrent against potential adversaries that may not have China's interests at heart. Uh, China has all its rights to modernize uh, its military as a defensive mechanism. And I believe that's what 
China's modernization of the military is for, mainly for a defensive sort of uh, mechanism. Mm. In terms of uh, the vision for the future, um, there are different interpretations. China has said it doesn't want a parallel internet, a world order. China says it benefited, therefore it is going to, it is a maintainer, a supporter of the current international order, meaning with the United Nations and the UN Charter at its core. Um, but China also wants to push for a fairer and more just international order because the current one, although it is a sound one, it is not perfect. But then there are people who are arguing that China wants to have a parallel system. China wants its own system where it has dominance. What do you see as the vision the Chinese leadership has for going forward? Uh, China wants to have a much more fairer, equitable world order. A world order that for the past, much of the 20th century was very Western centric and US centric. That has not benefited for much of the non-West, uh, the, the non-West world. And China wants that, wants to correct that order and China is not alone in wanting to correct that order. Many of the countries in the Global South wants to have a fairer and more equitable world order as well. So we look forward to having a much more broader, more embracing and more representative form of global governance that reflects the global community aspirations and, and, and interests and values and, and ideals. So I think China is taking the lead but it is not China alone that is wanting to, to bring about mm -hmm. change to the global order. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the developing one of the global south wants to see that change as well. Yeah, we're seeing the expansion of the BRIC um, grouping. Yeah, it's not alliance. I have to re-emphasize that. And more countries have expressed willingness to uh, join that group. Um, what is what is going to happen now that the United States is doubling down on using military might, seeing that economically or through an economic perspective, it's not able to compete with China in terms of its investment in, in, in these in other parts of the world? What's going to happen when the U.S. doubles down on the hard power and China continues to stay put on partnership and not alliance, especially military alliance? Well, we've got to show that there's an alternative to bringing stability and peace to the world through organizations like BRICS, through economic, joint economic uh, developments, through non-military sort of cooperations. The rest of us must show to the rest of the world that there's an alternative to this kind of hard power display that is being led uh, by the West and, and the UN. So there is another way in which we can bring about uh, common prosperity. There's another way in which we could move towards. But you think there is a denial? Uh, you, think, you think there is a reluctance to acknowledge that because the main media microphones are being are in the hands of people who have been, you know, um, educated in a Western way. They seem to be unable to uh, accept the new reality, and they seem even seem to be in denial in at this moment of the coming reality. Uh, yes, certainly in the Western uh, mainstream media, there is a kind of a different take on what is happening in the Global South. Uh, but, but for us in the Global South, we see things very differently. We see all these changes as very positive. We see all these changes that is very constructive. And we see these changes that will bring betterments not only to ourselves, but hopefully to the rest of the global community. This is a battle of narratives, and we know uh, that we could, we have to continue to work on it. We are going to continue to work on it, not only through on our, our pronouncement, but through on our efforts like BRICS, like countries coming together to work together for the common good. Like the China-Africa summit that just happened in early September is another very good example of all countries coming together and to show to the rest of the world that we can put aside differences to work for the common good. What would it take for one day for American leaders, for European leaders, Western European leaders to come and sit among the Global South and have this kind of discussion? Do you think it's ever going to happen in the near future? Um, I'm sanguine. I'm optimistic. I think eventually a good story will prevail, a strong story, a story that has got roots 
that has got foundation that is grounded on good values, good ideals, will in the long run prevail. Although we may not be able to win the narrative in the short term, but if, if we press on, I think the good story will prevail over the bad story in the long run. And I, I think, I hope, I'm sanguine that as we persevere, the tide will gradually, eventually change and move uh, in the direction that is good for the whole of the global community. What is the biggest challenge, though, as we move forward? The current trend continue to diverge. China and its uh, Global South partners working ever more closely, and the United States and the West clinging on to its dominance, although it's waning. Um, what do you think will be the biggest obstacle or dif difficulty to manage? Let me answer it this way. I think for us in the Global South in China, we must continue to be focused and single-minded in working on working on our common good and work on sharing our so, uh, aspirations and not be detracted by the de uh, detractors that has no interest in our ultimate uh, well-being. And secondly, is that we con must continue to persuade our friends in the West that this is a good thing that is happening in the Global South. They need not feel threatened and they can be part of this uh, wonderful, uh, amazing story that is happening right now in human history, where a huge, sizable portion of the human, human population will be experiencing unprecedented socioeconomic develop, development. Mm. And this is truly a, a, a historic moment in, in, in our times.